Hey there, welcome to our channel. Let's continue with our series. In the last episode, we have integrated Stripe in our source code. And we can see here in the stripe.go, we have added pretty much everything, right? So this is the time right now we're going to test it out our integration. We can see uh, the amount we are passing the hard-coded value from here in the um, transaction handler, right? So these are the steps we are going to cover today. And we will have a kind of round of a complete test. As of now, we cannot test this out because we need to add the, uh, the Stripe integration key right here, the Stripe secret key, right? So that's Stripe secret key, where we can get it. So let's try to understand the, the Stripe integration stuff from, from Stripe website. So let's go to our um, the Chrome, Google Chrome, and we can see this is the Stripe uh, official website where stripe.com. Uh, if you don't have any kind of account right here in the Stripe, then uh, sign up uh, using your uh, registered email ID or something similar like that. So in our case, I'm going to do sign in, let's say, all right? So I have already a couple of email address that is already been assigned with uh, different projects. But uh, if you don't have one, go to here and you click on the create account and you, you can just appeal all of the information and based on your country and all, you will get the approval quickly. So some of the countries you will get the approval within a within couple of minutes, maybe within a minute you will get the approval. But some countries it's taking a little bit time, but nothing to worry. Even if you're not getting the approval also, still you can use the, um, the sandbox account in terms of like test account, right? And in my case already I have account, so I'm gonna uh, use one of them, All right? Let's say I'm gonna use this one and sign in. And uh, while you are going to sign up for a Stripe account, then definitely you need to uh, enable the um, two-step authentication also. That's very important because this is a kind of financial, uh, financial tool, so uh, extra security will be really, it's going to be uh, helpful for everyone, right? As you can see right now, I have successfully signed in, and only two things we are we are going to be needed in this case right now, right? So one is called the publishable key, and another one is a secret key. So these are the two keys. It's going to help you out to interact with the, the Stripe from your source code. And um, so this is already live. That we are uh, we are making some kind of we are collecting payment using this uh, account. So what we can do uh, if you if you try to uh, test your integration, then make sure you're enabling this test mode, right, by switching this one. Then instantly your uh, publishable and secret key will be going to change, right? And you can reveal your secret key right here by clicking and by this I I icon. And otherwise, what you can do, in our case, it's not required to reveal it. So what we, we are going to do, we are just simply copying this uh, secret key and we are going to add to our environment variable, right? And if you go to transactions, right, then you can see all the transactions from here, right? So if we if we try to make a payment, right, test payment, then definitely you can you can see all the successful transactions here. And if you go to go to any of the transaction, you can see all the uh, all the required parameters. And let, let's say this is our payment ID. This is the card we have used, right? And uh, and some of the useful information. As an example, the the payment log, right? So payment log also you can see, right? So it is right here. You can see uh, if you expand this, uh, see all 115 lines, then you can see all the details from the, the payment stuff. Right? While you're initiating the payment, right, then definitely you'll be able to see step by step all the activities together, right? And this is really very useful. And as of now, right now, we have, uh, we have implemented the inbuilt feature. Then definitely, and that's why actually we are able to see all this stuff in, in this way. But uh, if we are, if you're not going to use the inbuilt feature, then some of the data are going to be differently. It, it will going to present you differently, right? That is also we can we can base it. But as of now, let's go with this, right? So what we can do? Let's go to our again, go to the homepage, and we can go to developer here, maybe here, settings, and home again. Yeah, from here we can just copy this one, uh, the secret key. What we can do, we can just copy this uh, secret key from here, right? Copy. I can just click on copy, copy, right? And go to our um, Golan, right? So where we have just like kept our environment variable. As you can see, this is our environment variable. And here you need to just paste your uh, secret key. So I'm gonna paste my one, right? So make sure you are using your own secret key because this secret key will be not going to be available right after this tutorial, right? 
And this variable name, it has to be same in our uh, app configuration as well as. Let, let's go to our configuration, go to app configuration. And here you can see this is the Stripe secret that is the uh, particular environment variable name we are using, right? So this has to be same just like this. And though we are right now, we are using this environment file.env file while we are going to use the deployment, then all of these things, we are not going to put it right here. We're going to put it in our GitHub uh, CI CD, right? So that is also, we are going to add it right here, right after a couple of episodes. And right now, let's try to have a round of test, like whether our transaction is going through or not, that, that we can uh, check it out, right? And what we can do right now, let's go to our transaction handler once again. And you can see this is kind of huge amount, right? So $100, right? So let's try to keep it minimum, all right? Let's say $1, right? Or maybe $2, let's say. Identical a little bit. Then we're going to spin our application. I'm going to be say make server. Right? Since our server is running here. So let's go to our postman. And here, this is the create payment, uh, create payment endpoint inside the user service, right? And, and this is the same endpoint we have added to our transaction handler. And base URL is uh, localhost 9000. Let's try to uh, let's try to send this request. All right? Can you see it is generating our all of the payment stuff that is we have seen in our previous episode as well as all of the details? Can you see like the amount total is the 200 uh, cent, right? That is going to be two to two USD, right? And some of the useful informations also we have right now, right? And let's try to click on this uh, this particular URL. That is, we are going to use as a kind of payment URL to collect our payment, right? And you can see the cancel URL also. We have the localhost three thousand cancel. This is this endpoint is it has to be your front end URL. It not it is not the back end URL because front end URL only get to know like you know, what kind of user you have logged in to make this payment and uh, front end is storing that the particular session or maybe uh, user token and etc. So while you are calling back to, to, to backend, this URL will be take care of uh, creating the order. So that is what we are going to do, right? So maybe from this integration, we are going to keep it like this way. But when we, are going, we will be going to put our hands on our uh, front end part, then definitely we will do a little bit of logic, like we will add a couple of lines of code right here, right? So let's try to click on this um, this link. And oops, I have just opened right here. So let's go to a browser. Maybe what I can do, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this one. Yeah. So let's um, let's press the command key or maybe command click. Then it will open the browser. And you can see it is fairly displaying the which organization we are just like collecting the payment. And you can you can see like we have added the product name as a kind of electronics, right? And uh, we have we have tried to uh, source the card like we have sourced the try to source the amount as a kind of two dollar that is already we have been added right here in the in the transaction handler right so this one and user ID this all right so this is we are going to keep track while we'll be making this payment successful right then order ID we are going to keep store that is we are, we can discuss in a in a bit let's go to Google Chrome and we can we can pass any kind of email ID. So right now you can you can see in the UI we have all of the information, but which card we can enter right here? So we need to enter your card number, right? We cannot use the physical card here because this is a kind of test integration, right? To test the integration, what we can do? Let's go to our Stripe documentation here, and this one, right? So here you can see it is already giving a kind of a test card option, right? So if you go to Docs dot stripe.com then you will you will be able to find uh, all of the information that's really cool and uh, nah, they're they're maintaining their documentations very nicely and organizedly they just kept all these uh, informations um, so here if you click on the test card right then you can see we have landed in the test card page where you can get a bunch of test cards right so all those test cards are some of the cards are available with the 3d secure authentication so 3D secure authentication is a kind of form of uh, the second step of the verification. Uh, as an example, right after entering your card number, your uh, expiry date and uh, the CVV number, then it will going to ask you to validate your, your identity or maybe validate your transaction by, by entering six digit code or maybe some form of like that. So most of the countries are having this uh, 3D secure authentication where your bank will send a kind of authentication uh, decode um, to your mobile number or email ID. And some of the countries can have a photo done. Uh, as an example, 
while you are making this payment, then in the 3D Secure authentication page, you will be you need to scan that particular code. Then your mobile banking application will generate a kind of code number. Then you need to enter that. That that is a kind of validation of this uh, particular transaction. So uh, there are, there are a whole lot of cards are there, like in the region and the country. So wherever you are residing in your country, you can just like use that, that particular card accordingly. And some of the cards you can use to for um, a successful transaction and for invalid or maybe um, and decline decline transaction also you can use right. So um, and those are the scenarios exactly. It's maintained right here, and you can just uh, go ahead and read this documentation carefully. Cool. So we are going to use the one of them right from here. So let's go here in the code episodes. Let's say this is exactly it says code episodes because uh, I have used this code episodes dot coms. Um, uh, the secret like the Stripe account. That's why. So let's try to use some kind of the email ID. We can say test at test.com and card number. We can pick it up one card number. Let's say first one we are going to keep it out, right? So uh, it says any three digits, right? Any future date. So you no need to necessarily enter any kind of like you know um, a rememberable code or something. So uh, only only make sure like. If you are using this Pizza card, then you need to enter this code. So you can just copy this code and you can just go ahead and paste it out here. Right. And um, it says the future date, then definitely I'm, I'm going to say uh, 12, let's say, and let's say 35. Right. And CPP number, any number you can, you can enter. And cardholder name, it doesn't make sense. Like you can put anything. As of now, we are using this test. That's why we are going to use test. And my country region is Germany, so I'm gonna keep it up this way. And you can you can check this option also if you if you wish to try to make the payment for the next time for this user, then next time it will not ask for the card number and and, and, and all this stuff, all right? So it will going to store your card number, but it will not going to store the card numbers and all the payment information in your application. It will going to store in the um, in Stripe's um, the customer base because by providing this uh, email ID. We are potentially creating one customer right there, right? So let's try to uh, click on the pay. So let's see what what it's what it's going to happen. Now you can see the payment was success, right? And it is redirected to uh, the success URL. But unfortunately, we don't have any front end spinning on the port two thousand. That's why it is uh, it is failing to load, right? So as I said in this diagram, right? So in in our previous lecture. We have just to create a session. We have received the um, the URL and everything, all right? And and then we have just opened that particular payment URL here in this browser. And as soon as we have opened that thing, all right? That browser in, in this browser, right? And in the in additional tab, or maybe you can say one different window, then it got disconnected, right? But, but this page has a communication with the payment provider with the Stripe, and it is already gave uh, a kind of a response. And it is it is just like coming back to our website as well as right with the success URL. This is what exactly it is displaying right here, right? And you can see here as soon as it is loaded here, so it is this page, this success page responsibility to create the order. So that is what we are missing right here, right? Somehow we need to create this order right here by calling the backend service. Gonna say hey, my name is Jay, and this is my email ID test at the test dot com, and I have this token that is stored in in our application, right? So if you go here, let's say in 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 uh, localhost 3000, if I'm gonna say inspect, then if I will go to the uh, network tab, right? Maybe uh, I'm not sure. I have something to store right here. Let let me bring it down in the bottom side. If I will go to application, right? Let's let me close this one here. And not uh, not the cookie. Maybe maybe you can store in the cookie as well as right. So hit there. There are a lot of cookies are stored right there, but still in the local storage, I don't have anything, right? So somehow uh, maybe maybe I need to well while well, I'm gonna spin the application, then in the local storage or somewhere we are going to store that particular application uh, user token, right? So you can say authorized token. That is what we are going to do. As soon as it is landing to this page, it will retrieve that token and it is it is it is going to call one backend call to to our backend service from this page, like success page. And in that backend service call, what it's going to do, all right? So it is going to call, right? If you go to transaction handler, right? So we we don't have anything to write here. So we are going to expose another call that's called verify. That verify will be going to create this this one, right? So here, 
we have just like you know create order we just kept it here as i as i explained in our one of the episodes this create order function is not going to be uh, we are not going to create order from here from user service right so uh, or maybe you can create order create order from here also but uh, both of these scenarios are same like you know right before create the order make sure we have the, the payment validations are done right so if you go to here in the uh, stripe integration can you see the get payment status already we kept it right there so where we are going to pass some kind of the payment id right and this payment status will be going to respond to you something right where in the session you will you will get like if you if you look at the session right you can see the, we have the payment intent and if payment intent we can see the status right so where this this particular payment was successful or failure we can get it from here how we can get it from here because how stripe will get to know because if you go to here in the uh, stripe dashboard once again and if you go to transaction uh, we made it we made two dollar of transaction can you see this transaction we have made right there two dollar and it is succeeded and it will be having all of the data right so as i explained in if you go down here in this section we'll be having all of this stuff you can see this is our payment intent this is payment intent id this is the id like you know charge id and status is succeeded amount is 200 right 200 cents so this is how the whole payment flow is going to work so right now we can uh, now right now we can confirm our our payment is working correctly right and the the second phase is what we need to do here let's go to transaction handler we need to cover everything like we need to we need to get our aggregated uh, total card amount from our user service then we need to pass this amount right here along with the user id and order id this order id also we need to generate and we need to somehow store in our payment so do we have a domain or our entity right here inside the domain we have a pump payment right so here we are going to tweak a little bit this payment structure right and uh, and we will be going to store some of the additional data as well as so it can be easily identified like that particular payment is belongs to this user so now we have received the payment payment status was successful let's go ahead and create the uh create the order cool then that is all the summary of this episode and the, in the next episode we are going to uh handle our make payment with the, with our live data so where we will be going to pass all the amount dynamically right then we will again try to test it once again then once that is done then we are going to put our hands on our, our pond and stuff right cool Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and uh, I would like to see you in another episode. Bye-bye.